Alright guys, here we are again on Antigua Shipyard and in the blue at the top of the map from the team Team Liquid, even sporting the Team Liquid blue color. It is none other than Liquid Hero and down at the bottom right part of the map in the teal this time around. He's going to go for the teal because it means he's going to win, apparently. <laughs> he's going to try it out. It's NS Hoso's Jock G. Yeah, I'm going with that. I, I, I'm, for his life. I'm pretty sure that's why he's picking teal. So Because he did. He, he, you so. know, he lost a couple of games in a row, and he came back as teal well. and brought it back to two to three, lost another game, and decided that teal is the way to go. Some players out there, they have those superstitions, you know? I mean, it's like any other sport. Certain players oh, sure. need, you know, specific things to succeed. I always like to... Bring up the example of Slayer's Ryung's lucky socks that he wears to all the yeah. matches. So, yep, yeah, some players just need that stuff. Now, Jokchi, of course, won game number one with some proxy play and a good hold with the uh, the Voidray follow-up from Hero afterwards. Um, but the other game that he won, the one on Sanchor and Mists, was actually just a really good, uh, solid macro game, you know? He out-macroed his opponent. He hit at just the right time when his opponent invested in upgrades but didn't have a huge Colossus count on the field or anything like that. So... Um, I, I wonder how that's going to skew his performance here because he's tried a couple of different things and nothing really has stuck. Well, he's got a plan for this map, obviously. I mean, it's another map, too, that's going to keep Hero guessing. It's a map that you could do a 1-1-1 on, but it's also a map that you could play a longer macro game on. Sure. So it's, it's kind of nice when you can go into a match like that where your opponent doesn't really know what to expect out of the map that you've chosen to. And it looks like he's going to go for a CC first, yeah. actually. Uh, Hero, on the other hand, of course, is putting up his gas right after his gateway, so uh, he'll at least have warp gate research pretty early on. Um, Hero now does, once again, though, you know, Jockey, both times he's done this, has uh, put that down right in front of the probe. Uh, kind of unfortunate timing this go around because he didn't know the probe was going to uh, be there right then. Well, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, hey, I'm, I'm doing this. What can you do to stop me? You know? Sure. It shows a, a level of confidence. And I, at this stage in the game, when you're down to your last one, you do need to kind of show that you're unafraid to your opponent. So Jock G basically yeah, saying, point. hey, I'm not out of this yet. I'm the GSL champion, man. I can come back and win this. And once again, Hero cancels his gases and goes right after a uh, Nexus. So this is yeah, actually a mirror of the game from Sanchorn Miss up till now. Uh, down to the gas, ga the gas cancel. <laughs> down to the gas cancel. I'm putting up Nexus. Oh, God. All right. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was some Missouri coming at me there. Oh, boy. Yep. Missouri. So here's the thing. I mean, uh, the reason we see Hero doing that is because if you if you go for a, a – usually if you go for a very standard build as Protoss standard, kind of get some stuff up, then expand, um, the Terran has a good chance of doing some damage with that early Marine Marauder Medivac push that hits at uh, – if you go Robo, for example, it hits at about the time that you're either your first Colossus has just come out – or your second Colossus is about ready to finish, kind of between your first and second Colossus. And uh, that can do a, a ton of damage if you if you hit that just right. So that's why we see Hero kind of switching up the timings a little bit, going for that Nexus right away. And he's going to add on things later on, make sure that he's got a good economy above all else. Right. And, you know, last go round on Sancho and Missy went up to four gates before he decided to throw down. Uh, yeah. You know, any tech or anything like that. So his tech kind of came all at once and left this opening for for uh, Jock G to move in and do some damage. We'll see if it's more spread out, if he wants to stick with that uh, four gate into double forge build again. Yeah, I think he's going to need to get a uh, another gateway or two here before too long. That's what he's saving up for, I would imagine. Sure. And Jock G, you know, just kind of like what we were talking about last time, not going up to the five gates this time, this time just going to three, I mean, three barracks before yes. getting his two gas, so... Yes, with that. yes, indeed. Kind of so some teching as well. Yeah, and we have just three gates coming out of Hero, so a little bit different from both sides, as a matter of fact. Well, I feel like what Jokchi is going to want to do in this game is is what he does best, which is kind of force a long game situation. If he can get to where there's two max out armies, I've got a feeling that Jokchi feels pretty confident about getting in there, getting those clutch EMPs, and winning big end game fights like that. I don't know if he's quite as confident in doing these kind of earlier timing pushes, so. I, I feel like we're going to see a, a pretty upgrade-heavy game from Jokchi and, and see him try to force that late game. I could be completely wrong, but just kind of this is the impression that I've gotten from kind of watching him play. Okay. Well, uh, that's certainly a game that I'd like to watch, so kind of pulling for that as well. Tech Lab down now, and uh, he's going right into Marauder Marine production. Has enough gas to start Stim now if he wanted to, and he is holding off. There we go. Stim on the way now. His opponent, though, Hero, sitting on three gates, replenishing some units and making sure that he has a nice economic footing to sit on, but uh, nothing too out of the ordinary quite yet. We're still waiting for his tech path to kind of develop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, Hero's going to be completely fine with just kind of chilling out. 
not having to fend any early pushes if that's what it comes to. I mean, we could see him do the double forge again and start getting those upgrades fairly quickly. Sure. Yep. All right. And let's see here now is uh, five stalkers in play. And is that it as far as attack units? Well, yeah, that one Zealot. So he's pretty far down on army right now, but he's starting to invest in his tech, and he's going to be able to warp in so many here in a bit. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look now, though. Twilight Council is on the way back for Chakji. He did finish one engineering bay and is investing in his factory, so he's going after both upgrades and medivacs all at once. Looks like he doesn't want to die to a very strong attack, though. Bunker's going up at the front. Yeah, well, I think not wanting to die is a key component of winning games, so that's, uh, that's a good <laughs> way for him to go, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Blink coming out for a hero. He's going to Try to do a little bit of harassment with that. Always something that's useful to have for defending drops, too. This is a this is a big map for Terran to get into the drop play on, so that's not too shocking at all. Sure. Um, and there's the Robo, too, so he's going to be able to do something like use an Observer to blink in. And let's see here now. Um, yeah, it looks like that Robo's going to pop up, and an Observer will be out there just as that blink finishes up, so we should have a good number of stalkers. Automaton! What did Automaton do to you? Looked at him funny, I, I guess. I, I, know. guess. I, I know Automaton is so threatening because he is superior critter choice, but... Sure. Yep. And uh, SEV is going to go down there. Bye-bye. All right. So pretty passive from both our players thus far. And that Robo just finishing up. And we'll see an Observer here momentarily. Bunch of Stalkers being warped in. Pretty easy on this map with so much cliff line to jump in and uh, pick off a couple of add-ons. Yep. And I was waiting to see if Jokchi was, or not Jokchi, if he was going to add on more gateways or add, or go for uh, forges. And it looks like he's going to go for gateways. So it's going to be a six gate blink with the observer as well. And uh, I don't know, we might see a warp prism out of him too in this one. Yeah, that would. Uh, I think that would be fun to watch as well. Looks yes. like a second observer already queued up right now. We'll see if he tries to do any sort of warp in it a bit. You know, sentry warp is pretty good on this map as well, just being able to block that ramp over and over again, right. especially well, when all of your units are concentrated on the bottom. I'm glad that they did buff the warp prism a while back because before that, mm -hmm. you know, seeing a warp prism was kind of a novelty in a game where, you know, nowadays there's a lot of reason and a lot of opportunity for Protoss players to get that warp prism and try to at least do some harassment too. Yeah, and it's just fun to watch from a spectator perspective yeah. as well. The more drop play, the more multitasking, the more exciting the game becomes. So, Yep, charge being researched by Hero. So mm -hmm. he's going to go for, you know, again, kind of a big gateway composition with those Twilight Council buffs. All right. Well, we have uh, officially gone past 11 minute or 10 minute no rush. Uh, Barry to move into 11 minutes, what I meant to say. Looks like our first observer is overhead. And Hero may blink in in just a bit. He is going uh, to. Yep. And Tech Lab goes down. See if he goes after the reactor as well. He needs to be able to get both of them. And he does. Gets away. He's lost one Stalker so far, but not bad. Two add-ons for one Stalker. Definitely worth it. Yeah, great little snipe there by Liquid Hero getting in there and doing some damage that he needed to. And he's going to continue to kind of pressure here. Oh, no. Actually, Jokji moved all his units up into his base. He loses a bunker. Right. And Hero can just blink away again. Yeah, nice job. Uh, loses one more Stalker there, but picks off two Marines and a Bunker. So once again, just doing nice little trades. Keep his opponent in his base. Mm -hmm. Just softening him up a little bit. And he's expanding behind it, too. Very cool. So yeah. just really kind of trying to keep his opponent on two bases. Maybe even give him the impression that he's going to make some sort of all-in here. Now, we know it's not an all-in. But this is still going to be a strong, scary push coming in here for Liquid Hero. All right, he's going to make his way up. There's already a bunch of SCVs pre-pulled. See how many of them go down. Uh, nice blink around the side. Just tries uh. to go straight after units. Now force fielding off a few units, and the bunker does finally go down. There's still one more remaining, and it looks like Hero's going to have to get out of town. Yeah, he's got to be really, really careful with this since he's expanding and teching behind it. If he loses this army too one-sidedly, he's going to be very vulnerable to drop play and counterattack. So he's kind of walking on a razor's edge here. Yeah. does manage to kind of come out, I would say, a little bit ahead in the end of that one. Yeah, still reinforcing pretty well, even after uh, throwing down that expansion. And uh, looks like we have a little worker-on-worker worker action there. Oh, yeah. No more... Uh, <laughs> That's the creepiest OEI I've ever heard from you. Um, and Hero's going to start picking away at a couple more SUVs. Just, uh, again, trying to be as annoying as possible. Keep his opponent just pinned in until uh, the production from this third oh, this base can start to be realized. Now, did he cancel that Templar Archives? Because he's making a Robo Bay really, really fast as oh, he well. He still has it. He does. Okay. Making a couple more gateways. So just kind of getting a little bit of everything, I guess, this yeah. game. 
making the choice between Colossi and Templar right now. He could also go Colossi and then just kind of fortify it with a few Archons too. I mean, obviously he's not starting Storm just yet. Yeah. But kind of interesting that he would get both of those tech buildings so quickly after each other. Having that tech switch available is really nice too. If he gets his opponent to overcommit to the Vikings, maybe he'll just switch it up and throw out some, some uh, you know, uh, some Templar in there and some Archons instead and negate those. But yeah, There's uh, Colossi on the way. Yes, there is. And let's see here. So we have Extended Thermal Lance being researched at the same time. So Hero investing in quite a bit. Once again, we have a, a pretty strong push here uh, with a lot of ghosts behind that as well. About to come from Jokji. Oops. Yeah, it looks like those Stalkers have to blink away. The pylon is going to go down while he sets himself this uh, third command center up. But what I will say, though, ooh, bye bye, SCV. Um, what I will say, though, is that Hero's been able to realize this base for quite a while. His economy's looking a little bit better than his opponent. He's on more workers. I think Jokshi scanned and killed that observer, did he? Uh, uh, like no, not quite yet. I would have thought he would have done that. I mean, he should know it's right there from uh, losing that SCV. But looks like uh, Hero's going to have to blink away. Yeah. Nice job getting all of his units away, though. And, uh, of course, his opponent's third base is going to come up a lot later. What are the upgrades at? We have one, two up for Jokji. So one, two and weapons. Zero, zero for uh, Hero. Hero's taking a big risk here with this. You know, this is kind of what killed him that other game. It was a big two base push from, push from Jokji, and it was a situation where Hero did not have upgrades and he teched a little bit too hard. Yeah. So this could be another kind of rough situation for our Protoss player. All right. Well, we have a second Colossus just being thrown in now. All some Archons uh, up there, and we do have 1-1 one, one on the way, but there's a huge upgrade disparity now. Jokji is flooding his way up the ramp. There's Guardian Shield and a bunch of Charge Lots making their way in. Uh, but two Colossi, all, that's huge. Yeah, all of the sentries were hit with EMP as well, so we're going to see if Hero still has enough to push this back, or if Jokji can just outright crush this force, trying to make his way up, and he just can't. Uh, bear the weight to the power of these Colossi, which are already killing so many units. 13 kills between them, as a matter of fact. Yeah, the fact that he had two Colossi instead of one made a huge difference, but it looks like Jokshi doing the right thing. He's going to go for a little bit of drop play while Hero's army is a little bit out of position. Looks like Hero's kind of anticipating this, though, sending those stalkers back to the middle. He's going to be able to blink in there. Trying to handle it, but Hopefully. he's going to definitely take some damage first. Yes, he is. Pylon's going down first of all, so it shuts down a good bit of production. Three gates now depowered. Oh, he's uh, hit the third, too. Wow, very nice job. Yeah, running right up. If he picks off those Colossi, that's huge. One yes, Colossus indeed. goes down a second oh, falls. No. The third going to go down as well, and Hero Oops. really just doesn't have that many units remaining now. Certainly nothing to deal out the damage against these very well upgraded bio units. Yeah, big supply gap now between the two players. In fact, we may even just see a GG from Hero here. Yeah. It's going to be very, very hard for to pick up or uh, catch up rather in yes. this game. Ghosts on the way as well. The upgrades just really, really looking nice for Jokshi at the moment. Yes, they are. Yes, they are, as a matter of fact. So, uh, in 1 1, still not finished up yet. We have another Colossus just about to pop out, but 66 apply differential between our two players. Jokshi continuing to reinforce, and now he's got a couple of Vikings in there as well. Yep. But, oh. yeah, I mean, at this point, Jokshi is just so far ahead. And uh, Hero doesn't have a lot of AoE anymore that it doesn't really matter what the Terran player does. He can basically just kind of bull rush in there and kill uh, his opponent almost whenever he needs to. I mean, he does have a little bit of damage there with the Archons on the one Colossi, right. side, but not a lot supporting it. Looks like Jokshi just wanting to play it safe, though, this game. All right, making sure there was no blink back into uh, Jokji's base. Doesn't look like there was. He has three base economy going nice and strong, and he's about maxed now, so um, he'll need to reinvest in some infrastructure in a second and throw down a couple more barracks. But uh, like you, I think he realizes that this game is pretty much in the bag now. Um, Hero is really going to take a, a miracle out of him to try and find his way back in. Yep. That's right. But he's gi being given a little bit of time, at least. He's trying mm -hmm. to re-expand. He's getting his upgrades going now. Can Chrono boost it like we see him doing there just to kind of catch up? Yeah, and if he's able to hit 2-2 two, two at about the same time the 2-3 finishes up, that disparity is going to be much better in his favor, but doesn't look like Jokji's going to give him that opportunity. He's max now, and he's going to make his way up as he constructs another three barracks right now. Yep. All right, making his way up, and oh, bye-bye, Probe Oops. Train. Sorry, your economy is done. Hero Radiant rushing in with a bunch more units. A uh, pretty decent Guardian Shield actually getting all of the units, but there's just too much stuff, and Hero's just going to crush on through. I'm sorry, uh, Jokji's going to crush on through.